Hello. It's me, Mayla Parachi. I just wanted to um, say hi to everybody and thanks for letting me uh, come and share some of the things that I know about singing with you guys. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a lesson on vocal transitions. So I know that a lot of you, if not most of you, sing and probably take some voice lessons with Mrs. Apilas or someone else. We'll be talking about vocal transitions, what it is, how to help me sing. And this is just a short intro about me. I'm a wife and mom. I uh, have been married for 13 years uh, this May to Jacob Leparacci. Um, and I have three kids. They start with, they all start with the letter L and end with the letter N. And their names are Landon, Lincoln, and Lawson. And I'm also a chorus teacher. I have a chorus of about 30 students. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just kind of depends on the year. Um, it could actually go up to 60 students. I have taught a year where there was about 60 students in that class. Uh, I'm a voice teacher where I have my own studio and I'm also a college professor where I teach uh, specific things about the voice and how to teach the voice and I help people uh, basically learn the basics about singing and know how to apply that into all the songs that they're learning. Okay, so in order for us to know what a vocal transition is, in your voice, we need to know what your ranges are. So we have different ranges. And in this picture that I have here, hang on just a sec. I'm just going to move, there we go. Um, in this picture that I have over here, it's a picture of a head uh, profile and the different ranges that go in those parts of the voice. So notice where it goes into the chest, it's in the lower part of the range. And this is specifically for female voices. But um, you can apply it to male voices as well. But you can just kind of see where it starts to centralize um, and where you can feel it in a different part of your voice. See the arrows that go up from the chest that's more into the mixed voice. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then um, into head voice slash falsetto as well. So those are the three different ranges that we'll be talking about today. So we have our chest voice, which is also known as the modal voice. Head voice can also be known as falsetto. Some people say it's different. I say it's very similar and usually falsetto is more referenced in male voices um, when they're going into more of that lighter texture uh, for guys. Um, head voice is more in the term when you're talking about it to girls or ladies or women only because it's a different feeling uh, because the size of the vocal folds um, also play a part in how you feel it. And the vibrations are more in the head area. I would say some, some people feel it in the back of the head. I feel it more in the front. So it kind of just depends on the person because we're all different. Well, God made all of us different and the way that we feel certain things will also be different. And then that last thing, is the mixed voice. So basically the mixed voice is a blend of the chest voice and the head voice. And for some people, the blend might be heavier or thicker or lighter. It kind of just depends on the person and how much you lean the air into your voice. So um, what are your vocal folds doing when you're trying to connect the chest voice and the head voice. So lots of people are like, my voice keeps breaking when I'm going from low to high or high to low. So 
I'm going to give you a couple of exercises that you could do to get your voice to connect the different parts of your voice. So when you're in the lower range, um, I want you to, uh, mm, I want you to feel the vibration there. So go ahead and put your hand on your chest and just feel the vibration in your chest voice. Mm, and we're going to go a fifth up. Mm, mm. So when you're humming that, if you can feel um, how the breath in your abdominals as you're going up on the hum, you can feel it contract a little bit as you're going up and then you'll feel the vibrations kind of lean a little bit more into the nasal area or the sinus area. So if you notice, head is here, your mouth is here, your chest is here. So what kind of meets in the middle? is kind of around the sinus head or sinus nasal area. So that kind of is where you want to feel that mix, that middle area of your face is where you want to feel the vibrations of what the tone is doing. So we're going to try it again, low from chest, humming just a fifth up, and we'll go half steps up, okay? So just humming and I want you to feel the vibrations. So you're starting to feel where it starts to lean a little bit more, especially in the hum. The hum is also a very good um, semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. We're gonna talk about that also in just a little bit but I'm gonna show you a picture of what the vocal folds are kind of doing. So when you're in head voice, it's thin fold. So you're just hitting the lighter, very thin part of your vocal folds. And I like to call it the one finger sound. It's kind of lighter area, but when you're in the chest voice, now I'm doing a whole octave because I want you to feel the difference or hear the difference in the tone. So this is the chest voice sound. And usually what happens is when we're transitioning from this sound to this sound, there's usually a break. So I'm going to purposefully create that break. And it kind of sounds like this. Uh, so if you hear that break in your voice, that is where uh, it's not really a problem, but the weakness lies in a lot of singers who are trying to really connect that chest voice and also that head voice so that that middle range um, doesn't sound like you're breaking. It's knowing where the vocal folds feel that break. Sometimes what happens is um, the air and the support of the air changes where the vocal folds um, feel where it wants to like kind of let go before it goes into the thin fold. But what you want to work on in practice is kind of letting the vocal fold still vibrate. So that's why you don't go too high too fast. And you wanna kind of connect, keep it connected. So stay in like a full. Uh, uh, and once you start to feel like the sound is starting to kind of let go and you're not in control of where it wants to go into that higher range, that's when you use something that I kind of mentioned in, uh, a couple minutes ago, uh, also known as semi-included vocal tract exercises, SOVTs. So um, the exercises, basically this is a, fancy way of saying uh, your mouth is partially open. That's what SOVTs are, okay? So 
if you look at this, this chart or this picture over here, the back pressure um, reflected at the lips create some of this pressure against the vocal folds. And then there's also the pressure from the lungs. And what that does is it um, makes the vocal folds still vibrate at the correct uh, frequency, but not work as hard. So usually what happens is the way we hear ourselves in our head, we, we always overcompensate. And so we blow the cords together really hard. And that makes us work, I guess, basically twice as hard or much harder than we should be working um, to create sound. So that's why I always like to start with a hum. It always just kind of gets the sound moving and the, and the breath moving. Um, but I'm gonna show you a couple of the exercises that have helped me. So the first one is the straw. Um, you could take any straw. I like to use regular size straw. Also a boba straw works really nicely. And then there's um, coffee stirrer straws. If you use the coffee stirrer straws, those I would recommend that you use three just because the, the diameter of those straws is so little and you won't feel the difference and then the pressure is a little too hard inside your mouth and then you, you won't really be able to create the sound that you want to create and you'd be working too hard in the opposite end so try it with the straw and you're going to do the same exact exercise moving the fifths up and then we also have um, a towel so the recommendation with the towel is you just take a regular towel. It could be like a face towel or something like that. And you just kind of cover, cover your mouth with it. And it still creates um, space for your voice to create sound. You just won't be as loud. So sing through it and do the same exact exercise. And you'll feel a difference and some of that same pressure that we were talking about. We also have the cup. And when I use the cup, I like to poke like three holes in the cup. I use a paper cup and then make sure that you cover your whole mouth with that cup and poke holes in there. And it'll also create that same pressure. And I would do the same exact exercise. So uh, another exercise that you can also do with these is not just the fifth. Uh, uh, and you start to feel where the voice is changing in the position from the chest voice into the mixed voice. So I start, I would start at the lowest part of your range uh, and then try to go in octaves and see how the SOVT works for you there. And then uh, we talked about fricative consonants in um, the IPA uh, class that I did and fricative consonants are basically anything that you're creating sound, uh, a voiced consonant. So instead of like an S, you would say a Z, or instead of a, an F, you would say a V, or um, something that you're creating that vibration for the sound. So for instance, Z, 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 So this specific exercise, you're still making your mouth partially open, slightly open, and you're creating that back pressure inside your mouth, and it's still getting your vocal folds to vibrate, but you're not working as hard. It's great warm up for before you sing or before you speak, um, but also a great cool down. Okay, so how will knowing and doing these SOVT exercises help you sing? If you do the SOVT exercises, it'll get your vocal folds in a neutral area so that you don't feel like your the back of your throat is swollen or tired or about to crack. 
So if you know you're about to sing a solo, or you know you're about to sing in a choir, or if you know that you're about to speak in front of people, and you're like, oh, I don't want my voice to sound bad. This ex exercises, SOVT exercises, will get your voice in a really good place, but you need to make sure that you start nice and low, and then you go into a neutralized range. So don't go super, super high. It's okay if you do go high, but bring it back down into um, a middle range. So if you do like a two octave thing and you go See, I did two octaves there. Um, you you want to get back in a middle area and then just kind of go and then notice where your voice how you feel it if it starts to feel like it's more comfortable and you're confident about how it feels and how you're talking in that moment then it's probably in a really good place for you but if you still feel like the back of the the throat is kind of swollen or dry or tired. Also a recommendation, drink a lot of water as well. Um, keeping the vocal folds uh, lubricated will also help you in having a moldable and flexible sound so that when you're talking or singing, you have flexibility in your range when you're talking or singing. So, and I'm swallowing a lot because uh, I drank a whole glass of water uh, before I did this lecture. But um, that is my recommendation for when you're trying to uh, get your voice in a really good place before you do a performance. Now, so with, um, trying to find that vocal transition, usually our, because our break is right here in the middle, uh, I also recommend that you start to speak in a range that you like to sing in. So for instance, if I like to sing um, like between middle C, which is C4 and the next C, which is C5, let me find that range on my phone really quick. So here is middle C. And here is the high C above that. So I would try to speak in between that range. So here it is, and I wanna go up here. So if I'm talking to someone and I'm trying to like really work the musculature for that range, and I'm like, hello, hello. There's that range right there. And I was able to sing that C just in my regular, normal, everyday speech. So. I like to recommend to people who are trying to increase their range and get more comfortable in a specific range to know where you feel it and then also increase it that way while you're where you feel it and where you hear it are kind of in the same area. Now this lower range here, like that's, that that's like a low f sharp not a lot of like girls speak that low but that's like a comfortable range for me for speaking um but when i sing and i want to kind of get more comfortable up here then i'll speak up here so the way that you talk also contributes to the way that you will sing because singing and speaking are very similar they're they're not one in the same because singing, you're sustaining and holding um, some of the notes and then you're kind of creating like legato, staccato, you're singing pitches in particular. But if you wanna get more comfortable with that specific range, that's another way that I tell students to um, work that middle section of their voice so that they become more comfortable with it. Okay, so. With that said, we're going to listen to a few people, a few volunteers. <laughs> 